This 2024 AL East betting preview edition of the MLB Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K-U-T-T dot com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy gives you the opportunity to play alongside your favorite players, Pick them for a chance to win 100x in NBA, NHL, college basketball, and much more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match bonus. We're also brought to you by Champs. Champs gives you the opportunity to run your own March Madness pool, and you can enter Champs free bracket contest for a chance to win $1,000. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs to enter today. And last but not least, we're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Welcome, everyone, to the MLB Gambling Podcast, part of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. It is Wednesday, March the 13th, currently 436 on the East Coast, here to get into our fifth division of the six division previews for the upcoming MLB season. Today, we'll be talking about the AL East division. Try not to turn this into a Yankees podcast because I got two Yankee fans here with me. But joining me first, you guys don't miss the voice of the Tennis Gambling Podcast, the WNBA Gambling Podcast, NBA, of course, here on the MLB and the Tennis Gambling Podcast. It's Scott Sudi Rochelle. Scott, what's going on, my man? How you doing? Yeah, yeah, I feel pretty good. Uh, I'm curious how you feel being outnumbered. Normally, I'm the only Yankees fan on the show. Now there's two of us and one of you. So how y'all doing over there? I think we all only left off Lante because he's also a Yankees fan as well, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, I'm always outnumbered, whether it's being a Red Sox supporter or being in my hometown of the Astros. So I get plenty of hate from everyone. Uh, but that's it, it's OK. It comes with the territory. But also joining us here, uh, Scott already mentioned another Yankee fan. More importantly, she's a sports betting host and analyst at Fanatic Sportsbook. You can find her on the MLB Network, NBA TV. And uh, she's turned into a very good personal friend of mine as well. It's Ariel Epstein, the prop queen herself. Ariel, how's it going this Wednesday afternoon? Uh, as a Yankees fan, it's not great. As a Ravens fan, it's awesome. So it's been <laughs> a lot of mixed feelings this week for me. Uh, yeah, definitely interesting week for you. Yeah, your Ravens pick up Derrick Henry. Uh, and then we get the news. Um, and a shout out to you, Ariel. I mean, you rescheduled this right on the spot for us because we usually do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And you're like... Ah, can we just wait and see if we, what happens with the Garrett Cole news? And we get the news earlier today. No, we'll no, talk no. about this is, that. You're making it so sugar-coated. This is not what happened. As soon as the Cole news gets released, <laughs> I get a text from Moon Office saying, oh, do you want to come on and discuss the AL East tomorrow? And I'm like, no, actually, I don't. Because we're all in New York thinking Garrett Cole's getting Tommy John surgery like this morning. And now we're finding out that he's going to get another opinion and he might only be out one to two months. So. Still a lot up in the air for Garrett Cole, but at least we're getting more info instead of having to do this show yesterday before we had anything. To be fair, I reached out to you early in February. I was like, we're going to start doing our MLB division previews. I want to get you on for the AL East. I know you're really busy. You probably forgot about that message that I sent you. No, I did not. (laughs) You just sent the second message to actually (laughs) schedule me. At the time that it was most convenient for a Red Sox fan. Uh, no, see, th- I'll, I'll, I'm going to send you the schedule that we had for the division previews. And it was just a coincidence that it was at uh-huh. least was supposed to be yesterday. But hey, we'll get into it uh, in a second here with the Yankees. Um, but yeah, fifth division here uh, of our six division previews. The only one left will be uh, the NL West uh, that Malcolm and Lante will cover tomorrow, in fact. Uh, so again, if you haven't already had the opportunity to check out the previous four that we have already done, Plenty of time before the season does start here. So, I mean, let's just dive right into it, right? New York Yankees. I mean, that's the hot topic right now with Garrett Cole. Uh, We got some news about Aaron Judge as well. Um, I mean, coming off a Cy Young year for Garrett Cole, they got Juan Soto in the offseason. Currently, as it stands for the New York Yankees. And again, this these numbers may shift a little bit because of the Garrett Cole news and, and things kind of transpiring with Aaron Judge as well. But right now, on FanDuel, the number was still at 91 and a half for uh, the New York Yankees. Their division odds right now still favored at plus 175. And for them to uh, win the actual World Series at 10 to 1 here. Um, Ariel, let me just start with you here. 
the hot topic right now, Garrett Cole, the news right now is it's obviously an elbow issue. He's going to fly, fly to California, uh, get another opinion on that. But right now, at minimum, he's going to be out one to two uh, months. We can start with that, and we can kind of get into the roster and the winter and things like that. But I know you both are Yankee fans. Not the greatest news to start the season, especially when your ace is going to be on the shelf to start the first two months here. But well, how are you feeling about your Yankees coming into this year? Not great. I would not bet anything in the futures market on the Yankees because if the Yankees weren't called the Yankees, those win totals, that division odd, and that World Series odd would not be nearly close to what it is. If the Yankees were a team like the Orioles or a team like, let's say, the White Sox, then not in a big market like New York and the Yankees, well, then they would have probably, without an ace, been booked like, I don't know, maybe second, third, like odds to win the division. The yeah. Yankees do not deserve that. If Garrett Cole is out for one to two months, which in all likelihood could be probably more if there is a lot more damage to that UCL and he needs Tommy John, then who's your ace? Carlos Rodon, who had a 70 RA last year. Marcus Stroman, who's technically a 2-3 pitcher. And sure, the Yankees could go out and get someone like a Blake Snell. He's coming off of a Cy Young season too. And at this rate, I'm curious how many Cy Young winners – end up with injuries that keep them out for a large part of the year the next season because they pitched so much the year before. And it doesn't seem like Snell and that deal is getting closer at the moment. Snell also is pretty inconsistent himself despite last year. And then they also are talking about, like, what, Dylan Cease? Like, no, thank you. He's not an ace either. So I don't like anything in the futures market, honestly, for the Yankees because until we know who that starting rotation is, it's not worth putting your money on. If anything, maybe an under on the win total. Scott? Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, as a Yankees fan, they got Soto, and we thought, great, what's next? And we're still waiting because it's been mostly negative from that point forward. Uh, you're looking at the injuries and, of course, Cole being out one to two months minimum, most likely. Still has to mm -hmm. rehab it. We'll see if there's any setbacks. The Yankees have had a lot of injury setbacks in years past. So we'll see how that goes for Cole. Point is, though, you're looking at the rotation, and it's still not great. Assuming Cole is going to be out for a couple of months, you have Rodon, who's been an absolute mess. Uh, Stroman, who got injured in the back half of last year, he was great. Cy Young candidate early in the year, and then that kind of fell apart in the second half. Schmidt was okay, back-end starter, and you have Cortez, who got injured also, and he doesn't really give you much length. So the rotation, not ideal. The lineup's good. We know Judge does have the toe issue, which is going to linger for a long time. I think Soto's going to be great. I'm not worried about him. Stanton, is he going to be good? I don't know. You're assuming he's going to miss a bunch of games anyway, because he always does. And you're kind of going down the line. There's a lot of question marks with this team. We're going to talk about a team in a second that I think should be favored ahead of the Yankees. I would take Baltimore. I think Baltimore right now is positioned in a better spot to win this division. Again, the Yankees won 82 games last year. Are they really jumping 10 games? with no call for about two months, Judge having a toe issue. And we know Judge gets injured almost every year anyway. And you're going down the line. There's a lot of question marks. So as a Yankees fan, I'm annoyed at how the offseason went, but I have to look at the win total under. These odds are off. I think Ariel's right. I think that if they were not given the Yankees tax, this line should be lower. And I also agree with Ariel that I'm not a Dylan, a Dylan Cease guy, and I do think the Yankees are going to make that move at some point in the next couple days. I did hear that trade talks did ramp up between the White Sox and the Yankees. I like the under. They might be a wild card team. I'm not picking them to win the division, but I see them finishing somewhere in the mid 80s, if I had to guess. I thought their offseason was already off to a bad start when they re, uh, decided to bring Aaron Boone back. I, I'm not an Aaron Boone guy. Uh, Scott, I know you weren't shocked when the week, I think it was like a week after the season was over, like the next couple of days. I've been days saying that, it for months, they said, for months at this point. We've said been saying it for years that I don't know why they keep bringing him yeah. back. No, I'm saying uh, they were going to bring him back again. Again. Yeah. I've heard that the players love him. Yeah. I the, like it. It's hard for me like to talk badly about someone that the players themselves say they love. I'm not in that clubhouse. There have been a lot of other issues that. I think the Yankees could look to because you look towards the top where this team, yeah, they got Juan Soto. Thankfully they finally made the big splash, but they still haven't gotten a number two pitcher to Garrett Cole, which is what they needed. Their bullpen was one of the best last year in baseball, but really didn't seem that way. Even though the numbers said so they didn't have a defined closer. 
And that's what the Yankees have prided themselves on for years. So I can't sit here and put all the blame on just their manager, Aaron Boone. I put blame on the Yankees front office for not building this team up and trusting that their farm system was going to be the reason for their success. Where aside for Aaron Judge, the Yankees farm system has not been as successful as they've wanted it to be. The Yankees have not dealt certain minor league players and prospects because they've been so concerned that this team is going to be so good with everyone in the farm system and no one has really produced the stars that the Yankees have aside for Aaron judge. We don't know anything about Anthony Volpe yet and how, what his ceiling is. He was okay last year, but not anything to write home about. He wasn't rookie of the year like Derek Jeter was and everyone else came from somewhere else. Anthony Rizzo, DJ LeMayhu, Giancarlo Stanton. They're not homegrown products. So, yeah, I don't like a lot of the moves that the Yankees have made in the last few years. So that's why I can't really just judge Aaron Boone for it. Yeah, and again, I think that for... Sorry, I can't believe Cashman is still here. Boone's one thing. I can't believe Cashman still has a job. That's a separate story. But Yankees fans have been unhappy with Cashman for a long time. And he makes the one obvious flash move to get Soto, which was kind of handed to him. And he hasn't done anything to improve the rest of the roster for multiple years and we're going to see another panic trade probably which is the cashman special we'll see what happens but yeah until unless rodon pans out or unless some of these guys that cashman spent some assets to acquire actually pan out i think he's the bigger question mark over boone boone i know he's not the best manager if the players like him they like him cashman's roster building has been disastrous over the last couple years and that really just cannot be overstated I think the one thing that I've noticed about the Yankees is that they have a lot of guys that want to hit for power, not guys that want to get on base and hit for average, right? And I think that's been one of their biggest setbacks because you have guys that have pop in this lineup, right? We talked about the Aaron Judges of the world, the John Carl Sands of the world. Juan Soto, I think, is a guy that can hit for average and hit for power, right? So I think that was a really good pickup for you guys. Uh, But now you have questions about the pitching. And I think right now going into the season for the Yankees is that now we have more questions because of the Garrett Cole injury as well. So we'll see, like Scott mentioned that trade talks are ramping up. You know, maybe they sign Blake Snell, maybe they get Jordan Montgomery. Maybe they trade for Dylan Cease. I think like you mentioned that it might be a panic trade for the senior Yankees team. But again, the bigger news is going to be, we'll see what transpires for Derek Cole, at least right now out one to two months. Uh, anything else for the Yankees before we wrap it up and get to the Baltimore Orioles here, Ariel? No, thank you. <laughs> Scott, anything else? No, I'm I'm kind of done. I'm just hoping things get better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. All right, let's get over to the Baltimore Orioles, uh, a team that, you know, Scott, you mentioned that I also think that should be favored now uh, to win this division. But right now, uh, a team that arrived on the map last year, right? Uh, a lot of young prospects came up. This team was young and exciting. They come into this season with a win total of 90 and a half. Their division odds right now are at plus 190 for them to win the world series around 12 to one um last year this team finished with 101 wins uh 61 losses last year they were dominant both at home and they were even better on the road um last year were the uh baltimore orioles 49 and 32 at home and 52 and 29 on the road last year for the baltimore orioles scott let me start with you on the baltimore orioles obviously the big splash move that they made in the offseason uh, getting, uh, getting Corbin Burns from the Milwaukee Brewers. And this was something that we also talked about last season uh, that they needed to get a front light starter. And they went out and did it. They got Corbin Burns, who right now I believe should move into the uh, favorite to win Cy Young in the American League, at least. Um, but Scott, let me start with you here on the Baltimore Orioles. 90 and a half is the number right now, plus 190 to win the uh, division. Your thoughts on the Orioles for this upcoming season? Yeah, I'm on the over. Uh, I love this team on paper. I think they should be the class of the division. They won 101 games last year, got Corbin Burns, and their win totals 11 less than it was last year. I don't understand the logic on that. I like the win total over here. Uh, You're looking at the overall rotation. You got Burns, who we know is a very solid addition there. Bradish was solid last year. Grayson was kind of up and down, but he was sharp at the end of last year, which should be, I think, a look sharper second year around. Kramer was a mess, but we know he has been good in years past. Means was injured. He came back. He was fine. And Wells is okay. The issue is Batista is going to be out for a while, but they did end up getting Craig Kimbrell. I'm not a Kimbrell guy, but they tried to bring in a veteran who can help out stabilizing the bullpen. I saw that head that head shake. I agree with off. I'm not a Kimbrell guy at all. <laughs> but still, point is they at least tried to deal 
with the Batista injury, and maybe they can patch some stuff together there. I like the lineup, though. I mean, the lineup as well, it's full of a lot of very talented young players. Rushman's great. He's potentially the best catcher in the league. I think he's phenomenal. Uh, You're looking at Westberg is a pretty good young second baseman. You have Gunnar Henderson, who we know is incredible, AL Rookie of the Year. Uh, Mullins is good. Santander is good. Mountcastle got injured. He's solid, too. The issue I had with that team was Mateo, and they got Jackson Holiday waiting in the wings, who's really, really good. So... I don't know if this team has many flaws. They won 100-plus games last year. They're going to be really, really good. Like As a Yankees fan, I'm hoping to make a case that this team is going to slip up. I really don't see it. They got to the playoffs, the classic young team that got buried in the playoffs. They're hungry for more. I see that happening. This team could win 100 again. It wouldn't shock me. This team's really good on paper. Give me 96 wins. I think they win the division. Yeah, really what I did like about this team is that there was injury. Uh, there was concerns for the uh, pitching rotation, like you mentioned, coming into this season, right? I mean, Kyle Brash is, has a sprained UCL. He's going to open the season on the IL. Um, there was some, you know, talks about Grayson Rodriguez, and you mentioned John Means coming off of the elbow injury himself. Um, and they went out and got a frontline starter in, in Corbin Burns, and I, I mean, applaud them for making that move and, and getting a, a number one guy in this rotation. They have, uh, I believe, I was reading with that. I think it's three or four prospects. That are top 30, um, according to MLB.com and the in the prospects rankings. And again, like you mentioned, the number one overall um prospect in Jackson Holiday, who's only 20 years old, that he may be coming up sooner rather than later for this Baltimore Orioles team. So, I mean, for over the last three seasons, this team has significantly improved their win totals from I think it was 50 something from the 2021 season. They had 83 in 2022, and just last year, like we mentioned, 101. For them to win the AL East title. So this is going to be a really fun, exciting team to watch uh, this upcoming season. Ariel, thoughts on the Baltimore Orioles and their win total right now at 90 and a half or just generally for the upcoming season? I would actually look at something we don't have listed on the odds here below us. The AL. If you love the Orioles so much, you think they're going to win the division, think they're going to have home field at some point throughout the playoffs then why not bet for a team that won the league last year in the regular season? They lost in that opening series because of inexperience, which I totally saw coming. Inexperience plays a huge factor in the playoffs. Now this team's experienced. Those jitters aren't going to get there. If you don't have to worry about a wild card spot and you win the division and you just have to play a divisional series, then you get to the ALCS, then hedge your bets if you want to and have the Orioles winning the pennant then you can go bet the other side if you want to hedge. At least it gives you some options if you love the Orioles this year, which I do really do. I really do like the Orioles. I'm just not taking them at plus 190 to win the division. Sure, if Cole's announced out, do the Orioles potentially slide in? Yeah. But the truth is, I need to wait for the Orioles. This is a young team. And last year, a lot of people didn't see this team coming. They underestimated them. There wasn't a lot of film on them. How did these batters adjust to the pitcher's adjustments, especially pitching adjustments by veterans. I give veteran pitchers the upper hand against these young batters. I need to see how the hitters readjust at the plate. I do love that David Rubenstein now is the owner of the team who has deep pockets. Rubenstein made Cal Ripken a partner with him. If the Orioles, and when the Orioles are in the mix midway through the season at the trade deadline, Maybe they do go for a more legitimate closer than Craig Kimbrell. Maybe they do get another solid bat or another solid pitcher. Maybe just someone else to bolster that bullpen, which is what I could definitely see them doing because Kimbrell's unreliable, but Cano looked pretty good last year. He just wasn't a great closer. He was a really good setup man, though. You mentioned how you have Jackson Holiday potentially coming up to play second. That'd be awesome. And... I just, with Corbin, like, I don't want to rehash everything that you guys said, so it's repetitive, but let's also not forget John Means is probably coming off Tommy John's surgery. He can also help this starting rotation for the Orioles. The most valuable play is to have the Orioles win the AL, and this way, when you get the ALCS, you can have some options there. Yeah, I think that the the Baltimore Orioles are going to be a team that – I don't want to call it a public side just because, like you mentioned, how exciting they were last year. But it'll be interesting to see, like you mentioned, how I had plus 360 for that team to make the playoffs last year. That's absurd. The Cincinnati yeah. Reds are only two to one to make the playoffs this season. That's how underestimated the Orioles were. And again, they like you mentioned, like I mean, they defied the odds last year. And, and again, the young core group, it'll be interesting that 
we saw a lot of these hitters last year have a great season, right? Do we see them hit a wall this upcoming season? Because like you mentioned, the scouting reports and those, those, the people that get paid the bucks to scout these batters, are they going to be able to figure out these batters or are the batters of the Baltimore Orioles going to be able to adjust as the season goes on? But this lineup, I mean, up and down one to seven, one to eight, one to nine, it's loaded. And again, like we mentioned, Jackson holiday could come up sooner rather than later for this team. So I think the darling right now for this division with the news about the New York Yankees and Garrett Cole is right now going to be the Baltimore Orioles. So I, I'm on the over with Scott at the over 90 and a half. I think this is a team that can win at minimum 95, 96 games. Would I be surprised if they get into triple, digit again, triple digits again? Absolutely not. I think that Gary, that's a great point that you brought up about the ownership as well, that they, the owner is now a local guy. He brought in Cal Ripken. So they're not going to be afraid to go out and make a move where they need to, to improve this roster here. So I love the over 90 and a half, and I like your call about the AL pennant here at plus 550 as well. Um, and right now, for them to win the World Series at 12 to 1. Uh, anything else for this team, guys, uh, before we get over to the next team in this division? They just they just remind me of the Royals that won the World Series like 10 years ago. I just see a lot of homegrown yeah. talent, a lot of star power that's going to get a lot of money either with the current team or elsewhere. But they got a lot of young stars that are going to be really good for a really long time. And I just think that they're going to be here to stay for a while. Yep, I 100% agree with that. All right, before we get over to the next team in this division, let me tell everyone about uh, Merch Madness. 15% off of everything in the merch store using promo code MADNESS. A uh, lot of great stuff on there. Obviously, if you're on brand with SGPN, first half unders t-shirt, court storm shirts, uh, courtesy of the College Basketball Experience. Got some new hats for the NBA Gambling Podcast. And with the MLB season around the corner, make sure you guys get in there, get you some uh, T-shirts for the MLB Gambling Podcast, coffee mugs. Um, there's a lot of great memorabilia in there as well. And we're going to be adding more stuff uh, for the MLB season up, uh, up for the upcoming weeks as well. So again, uh, till next Thursday, when the tournament actually does start, 15% off everything in the merch store, but make sure you use that promo code um, MADNESS, 15% off of everything. And we're also brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer -peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Peer-to-peer -peer social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes and ton of fun social features that give it a feel of a betting social network. Cut offers lower VIG and fully customizable odds. Create your own bets. Cut handles the payment side of things so you never have to chase anyone down for money. Social features include group chats, betting leaderboards, head-to-head -head history, user profiles, fan groups, and much more. They also have a rewards program so you can get cash back on every single item uh, or every single time you make a bet against your friend or other users. I know Sean and Kramer have a uh, bet posted there on cut if there are going to be um, over or under one and a half buzzer beaters in the tournament. So you can get down on that action as well. All you got to do is download cut today in the app store or go to cut.com. That's K-U-T-T -T, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And we're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the uh, easiest play to play, play fantasy sports. It's also a, the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. You can play their pick em game. Pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's upcoming games for a chance to win big. You can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Pick between two and five players to build a pick em entry. You can also make rival picks, which picks two players against each other. Um, sign up today. And make sure you use that promo code MLB SGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to $100, as well as an instant pick em special. Must be 18 years or older and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play, call 1 800 522 4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org. All right, let's get over to the next team in this division. That is going to be the team up north, the Toronto Blue Jays, who come into this uh, season with a win total of 86 and a half. Uh, division odds are at four to one, AL pennant plus 950, and for them to win the World Series at 20 to one. Uh, last season, this team finished third in this division with a record of 89 and 73, 43 and 30 at, at home, 46 and 35. On the road were the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, it, it was funny because when the Otani sweepstakes started, that there was some steam that he would end up with the Toronto Blue Jays. I just thought that I would, that was all just smoke and mirrors talk. It was going to be one of these big market teams, and lo and behold, Otani ended up uh, with the LA Dodgers. But they did make some great offseason moves to you know really improve their batting side of things. Still a little skeptical uh, skeptical about their um, pitching rotation here, but. 
Uh, Scott, let me start with you on the Toronto Blue Jays for this upcoming season. What are your thoughts on this team? Well, the Blue Jays were a team that we couldn't stand last year because it seemed like they kept going up and down. You, you look <laughs> at the record and they finished with 89 wins. So they actually had a good yeah. record at the end of it. I'm going to lean under. Uh, I think this team is going to underachieve slightly. I think they're going to finish above 500, but I see them finishing around like 84, something like that. But looking at the overall roster, this team has been really trying to, I don't know, toot its own horn for several years. Wasn't Vlad saying that that was the trailer and like this is the movie and they did absolutely nothing after that? Like, I feel like Toronto just talks a lot of trash and they really don't back it up too much. But I'm going to lean to the under. I just have too many question marks about this overall team. The lineup seems okay on paper. They got Kiner Falefa to help out as a utility guy. Uh, but I'm looking at the overall outfield. Springer gets injured all the time. Kiermaier gets injured all the time. Varsho was kind of hit or miss last year, mostly miss. Even Vlad kind of underachieved last year for the power numbers. But going through the actual lineup, I don't think they really did enough to address the concerns. They got Justin Turner. That's a nice piece as a DH, but still. The rotation's fine. Gaussman's good. Bassett's fine. Barrios got paid a lot of money. He's been kind of up and down. Kikuchi had a good start to last year, then was kind of up and down as well. And Manoa, I guess, yeah, good luck with that one. Uh, so besides that, <laughs> I don't really have much. I see this team being kind of where it was last year. They made the playoffs technically, and then they got embarrassed by, it was Minnesota, right? Who they ended up losing to? It was Minnesota, I, I believe so, but, yeah. They got swept by the Twins. Either way, the point series. is... Yeah, yeah. this team can hit with guys on base. We saw that in the playoffs. We saw for most of the season. I don't see that changing. I think 89 wins last year was pretty fortunate. I think that the regression is definitely in store, which is why this win total is a couple wins less, despite making some moves this offseason, including getting Chad Green, for example, former Yankee. But still, I'm going to lean under. Give me some type of 84 and 78 season. Blue Jays are that one team that are in conversations every single offseason or trade deadline for a significant, you know, free agent, but they always fail to uh, acquire that piece. Uh, but I think you nailed it, Scott, that for me, for this Blue Jays team, it starts and stops with George Springer. Um, he's now more injured than not um, for this Blue Jays team. And I've, I've, just, well, I've seen what he's been able to do when he was with the Astros, but maybe those days are behind him now. Um so again, if he's able to stay healthy, he's able to be consistent. I think that's the key for George Springer. We know Bo Bichette is going to be a hit machine for this team. I mean, I was um, I had him for hits leader uh, last year um, for this team, but he's going to be a stud. We'll be we'll see if Vlad's able to bounce back. I mean, there was times last year where he was just in absolute slumps last year, and they weren't able to hit with guys on base. And you mentioned I really do like the Justin Turner pickup. I mean, he was really good for the Red Sox last year. Um, he's getting up there in age as well, but it, for him to be at that DH spot in that four hole, what's projected right now for this Blue Jays team, uh, I think that's a good piece to have there because this is a guy that can always hover around batting 300 and bring in the runs for you. I just have more questions about the pitching rotation. I know what Kevin Gausman's going to be able to do year in and year out, but I'm not sure what I'm going to get from Chris Bassett because there's flashes where he looks like a potential Cy Young pitcher, and there's this time where He's an absolute gas can, and there's the same thing with Jose Berrios, and I mean with Kikuchi as well. Um, so again, I and then you mentioned Alec Manoa last year, just was not very good. He got sent down to the to the minors, and he, he just hasn't panned out. So it'll be interesting to see how this rotation pans out uh, for this. I think it's for this entire division, honestly. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm with you, Scott. I'm leaning with the under for this Blue Jays team. I just think they can't live up to expectation, especially when I think that. The Orioles improved. I think the Yankees will be competent enough. I mean, all jokes aside, um, because they, I, I, they can, they do have a lineup that can hit. I think they'll go out and make the proper moves. But I just think that this is a team in this division that's going to take a step back because I feel like the Tampa Bay Rays are that more one consistent team every single year because people always count them out. So we'll talk about the Rays here in a second. But I'm on the under here for the Toronto Blue Jays. Ariel, what do you got for the um, for the Blue Jays here? I'm looking at it from a value perspective. I'm on a completely different side. This is the team that has the most value to win the American League East at four to one. I have no issue to, I have no interest to sit on the Orioles at plus 150 because you're getting a young team at a price that is potentially an overreaction to last year, potentially. Then the Yankees, who again, I said should not be favored to win that division. The next best is Toronto, who out of all, I would say, 
maybe the Orioles go deeper, but again, they're still young and have some question marks on Dean Kramer's return from Tommy John. Can Gunnar Henderson make the adjustments in his second season? Or excuse me, Gunnar Henderson. Um, uh, why am I blanking on the name right now? Anyway, uh, I'm thinking of not Gunnar Henderson, the pitcher on the or Grayson Rodriguez. Grayson Rodriguez, can he make the proper adjustments in his second season for the Orioles? But again, going back to the Blue Jays, they have a very veteran rotation between that, at least that first three. And Bassett pitched a lot better at home than he did on the road. So at least those home starts were good. Barrios could have a bounce back year. And of course, we talk about the strikeout machine of Kevin Gossman. I, I look at this lineup and you have the perfect mix of if Springer's healthy, you've got Springer, Bichette who get on base. Vladdy and Justin Turner can knock them in. Kevin Biggio also can get on base. I like the front, the top of this lineup. They have the biggest ceiling of, or the highest ceiling um, aside for the Orioles. But again, the Orioles have no value. So if I'm looking at it from value on a price that I want to sit on up until October, the Blue Jays are giving me the most fun ride four to one for a division that's always close every single season. And the Blue Jays are always in the mix. You're going to take the Red Sox out most likely this year. The Rays are probably out of the race this year. So if you're talking about a division that's the closest of every division in every sport, every single season, the AL East is one of the best of the best. So if the Blue Jays are going to be in the mix the entire year, just like they usually are, if the Yankees take a step back and everyone's around 90-something wins like you're projecting, then the Blue Jays should be right there. So I'd rather take 4-1 to one on a team that's right there as opposed to taking someone at – plus 150 or two to one. Yeah. And again, like, yeah, I think you hit the nail that this division turns out closer uh, rather than, um, you know, the separation, maybe the something that you see in like the NL West with the Dodgers, right? Just because this uh, division has teams that at the top of it, right? The Orioles, the Yankees, the Rays, um, the Blue Jays. I mean, the Red Sox are going to be the dump of this division until they make significant moves, um, especially to that pitching rotation. But I, again, for this Blue Jays team, I think their talent is there. It's just about them putting it all together for one season and trying to stay healthy because they've dealt with a lot of injuries um, over the past season, whether it's been George Springer, whether it's been Vlad, whether it's been their pitching rotation. So um, it'll be interesting because I feel like this team is that, that one wild card for me in this division with the Blue Jays. Again, I see the upside for them. I was all in on them. Either it was last year, the season prior because of the moves that did they did make. Uh, they let me down at that point, but Maybe I've soured on them a little bit, but I think there is some upside there for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. Um, Ariel, I know you got to get out here real quick. I want to get your thoughts on the Boston Red Sox before we get to the um, to the Tampa Bay Rays here. I, I am absolutely done with this team. Um, John Henry needs to sell this team. This pitching rotation is going to be atrocious. And I think there's going to come to a point for this Red Sox team that either Rafael Devers is going to tip the hand of the ownership in the front office, or he's going to impress a trade and he's going to be on the move. I know they signed him to that big contract, but he even came out and said he hasn't been very vocal, but he came out this off season when the spring training started, but he was kind of disappointed at the moves or the lack of their moves to improve this roster. Alex Cora, we know is going to be the manager there, but this pitching rotation is going to be absolutely a, a dumpster fire. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Red Sox here uh, for this upcoming season? You poor Red Sox fans, right? No, I don't feel bad for you guys. You had a really nice run. It's very hard to maintain it. Um, the Red Sox tried to make a deal for Giolito, and now he's injured. Um, you've got Liam Hendricks, who has been injured, of course, minus the cancer. Um, Chris Sale is gone, which is good for losing him in the rotation because he is also injury prone. But I look down this lineup, Devers, Story, and Yoshida. Those are the three, and Yoshida's awesome as long as he stays healthy, too. I know he got a little banged up throughout the year, but if anything, I'm just looking at, like, Yoshida props on the season or something because other than that, there is nothing I like about the Red Sox, and, of course, you're going to have – you have a team that won 78 games last year, so now your win total is 77 and a half, and they've gotten worse than they were last season. So you lose Turner, you lose Paxton, you lose Kluber, you lose Sale, you lose Verdugo – under on the win total um, would be the only play for me. I mean, I agree with you. I think, again, this pitching rotation, there's upside that people are talking about Claire Crawford taking the next step. They signed Brian Bello to the big deal uh, this offseason, extending him. I think that he's probably, 
<laughs> yeah. Um, but again, this pitching rotation is it's gonna be a team that's gonna be giving up a lot of runs, but scoring a lot of runs at the same time. Right. The, the, the young the guys problem are is that you're not gonna be a buyer at the deadline, you're gonna be a yeah, seller. So exactly. even at that point, it's you're you're not looking at a team that's gonna be in the mix, most likely, nor are they expecting to be in the mix at the trade deadline. So why put any money on futures for a team that's just gonna be selling in four months? Yep, yeah, I agree. Um, uh, I'm going to let you get out of here. I know, you, uh, you, you have a uh, bigger th fish to fry here. I'm going to no. give you the floor. <laughs> we started a few minutes late. I feel it's really okay. bad. I mean, me and Scott can sit here for hours and just talk baseball and, and basketball and all that good stuff. But uh, I'm going to give you the floor. Anything that you want to plug before uh, I let you get out of here. Fanatic sports book, uh, MLB network starting soon, NBA TV. And we actually have this like new show, which is what I'm actually doing tonight. It's on true TV called the line. Basically, True TV is starting up a lot of sports shows, and we're doing a sports betting show, um, very similar to what we do at NBA Bet, NBA TV. But it's for anybody who, you know, in March Madness, you get True TV so that you can watch your March Madness games. So they're making it worth your while, more bang for your buck. By getting True TV, you're also going to get some good sports programming, including sports betting shows. Sweet. There we go. Yeah, make sure. I mean, you could find – after around this time, you'll find Ariel, whether it's on MLB Network, whether it's on NBA TV for sure. Ariel, appreciate you taking the time out to joining us here on the MLB Gambling Pod because I'll definitely uh, we'll get you back up, uh, of course, during the regular season. But make sure you follow her uh, on Twitter or X, whatever you may want to call it, at Ariel Epstein. Uh, thank you, Ariel. I will talk to you very, very soon. You got it. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Yep. Take care. Scott, Red Sox, I mean, we'll, we'll, I mean, I don't think this was a big conversation about the Red Sox. Um, I mean, not down on this team. I think this team will finish up last in the division. Their win total reflects that. 16 to 1 with the division, 22 to 1 for the AL Pena, 50 to 1. Um, the talent, the, the young talent is there, right? It's about them starting to pan out for this Red Sox rotation. And I'm talking about the J, the Jaron Derns of the world, the Tristan Casses of the world. Um, they have some some guys. I mean, not the most exciting in the in the minor league system for this team. Um, but what are your thoughts on this Red Sox team for this upcoming year? Uh, the owner cares more about soccer, so yeah, I'm not going to take it over. Liverpool. This team. This, <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, when when Liverpool's in the middle of a title race, and you know, you might be focused on literally bigger fish to fry overseas. I don't know why you're going to bother caring much about a baseball team that you have not really invested in for the last couple of years. Yeah. You paid Devers because the team would have revolted if you didn't. So you had no choice, but you're looking at what else they've done. What have they done? They got Giolito who's out for the year. So that was a waste. And even if Giolito was healthy, that's not necessarily a good acquisition based on what happened the last couple of years. I like Bello Crawford's okay. Houck's okay. I guess. Pavetta, I'm not a fan of. You know that. The bullpen isn't very good. I mean, Jansen's fine. Is the middle relief good? Not really. I don't mind Whitlock, but he was kind of a mess at the end of last year. The lineup, I mean, Casas is good. Uh, they got Grisham uh, from the – or Grissom, however you want to pronounce it, from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see how he can do. Story got injured. He's always injured, so we'll see how he pans out this year. They got Tyler O'Neill, who got injured last year, who has a lot of power, but he can't really stay healthy. There's a lot of question marks, not many answers. Is there also kind of a Red Sox bias here? Because this roster on paper should not have a win total of 77 and a half. Like this win total, if you put the roster on, let's say, Pittsburgh, this win total would be like 72 and a half, right? Like this team on paper should not be over under 77 and a half. I got to go with the under. This team might not reach 70. I, I recognize that they have one of the best managers in the division, but core can only get you so far. This roster screams like 72 and 90. I think this win total is too high. I'm going to go on the under. I think it's something similar that we just talked about with the Yankees is that you get that. Um, I guess I, I don't want to call it a tax, but I guess the name recognition because it's the Boston Red Sox. Um, but again, I don't think they've been in that conversation now since they last won the title. What was it back in 2019? Um, mm -hmm. You know, for was it 2017, 2019 or 2017? I can't remember. But um, after that, it's just kind of, I think after that Mookie Betts trade, it really left a sour taste in the mouth 
of a lot of the fans, and I'm specifically in Boston. And I, I know I'm not in, right on the boots in the ground in Boston, but obviously Mookie Betts, one of the best players in MLB, right? We talk about the Otanis of the world. We talk about, I think Mookie Betts' name is right up there in that conversation. So they had the opportunity to have Devers and um, Betts be part of this future. Same thing with Xander Bogarts. I, don't, I think Bogarts was okay to let go because they have a shortstop in the minor leagues that's going to be coming up in that contract that the Padres gave him. Was absolutely absurd, and I don't. I think that's a smart financial move that the Red Sox decided not to make uh, because I think that pays him well in, until like his forties, if I'm not mistaken, for Xander Bogart. Was so, it a thirteen-year deal or something? It was thirteen or yeah, years was, or something yeah, crazy. Uh, yeah, but. twelve, thirteen years. So I, I think that was smart for them not to pay him that amount of money. But I mean, when they had that core intact, right? I mean, they they won the world the World Series title. So uh, and right now, I mean, for this team, they're kind of trying to figure out: Hey, do we absolutely? blow this thing up and build from the ground up or do we try to acquire some pieces but at the same time like you can't acquire a piece like before ariel you know said that they're not going to be buyers at the trade deadline i mean there was a season where they kind of defied it and made it to the playoffs only to be eliminated but i think for this red sox team i i'm a, i mean their win total is at 77 and a half for a reason they're going to be at the bottom of this division for a reason so and like i mentioned that it's going to come to a point that devers is either going to tip the hand of the first or sorry the front office and said we got to go out and make some moves or some signings in the next offseason or he's going to request a trade and i think that's really going to upset a lot of boston red sox fans so, and again like you mentioned it starts with the ownership who are more invested in in, in liverpool and in i think what is it called the fenway sports group or something like that the lebron is proud of, uh, what, part of yeah I don't yeah know. whatever it's called lebron is part of as well so don't want to waste more time in this. I'm on the under here for the Red Sox. I mean, I would bet them to finish last in this division here as well. Uh, do you have anything else for this Red Sox team? Uh, no, not really. They're probably going to be selling guys off at the deadline because why not? Uh, but yeah, yeah, it starts with ownership. Red Sox were a big spending team. Now they're focused on spending in other sports. So yeah, yeah not probably going to go well for Boston. All right, before we get over to the last team in this division, let me tell everyone about Champs. Champs is hosting a free March Madness bracket, bracket contest for a chance to win $1,000. Plus, if you host your own March Madness pool on Champs, you'll get an extra free entry into the bracket contest. Tiebreakers are determined by who enters first, so make sure to register now so you don't miss out. Head to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. And we're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame Bets, a sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NBA and soccer bet with circle stats and data. Enter any parlay idea into Hall of Fame Bets' revolutionary parlay optimizer tool to get hit rates broken down by leg, as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets or craft more intelligent data than parlays. Down the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% for your first month. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame bets. All right, Scott, let's get over to the last team in this division. That is going to be the Tampa Bay Rays. They have a win total of 84 and a half for this upcoming season. Their division odds are at 6 to 1. AL Pennant, 16 to 1. World Series odds at 35 to 1. And this team, uh, I have gone wrong for the last two seasons because I always end up taking the under. And they have turned out to be a fantastic regular season team. Uh, but when it comes to the playoffs, this team just uh, pretty much gets eliminated within the uh, wild card round or the divisional round however far they make it but last season this team did finish up with 99 wins they got off to that what, what was it like 13 to no 14 to no start um mm -hmm. last year uh because their schedule was uh, such a cupcake schedule but 99 wins last year and there was a lot of moves that were made for this team last year right obviously tyler glass now getting traded over to the dodgers um, excuse me manuel margot no longer with this team as well um they added Amen Rosario to the infield to come play shortstop. Um, they added Phil Maton into that bullpen, Tyler Alexander as well. Um, now you're going to be without your ace pitcher in Shane McClanahan, who's expected to miss the entire 2024 season due to TJ surgery. And it's just, I feel like that's just been the theme 
for this division. Um, you know, so we've kind of been talking about it here, but um, I mean, for the most part, this team has been absolutely fantastic during the regular season. What do you think about this team with the win total right now of 84 and a half? Yeah, so you've gotten the Rays wrong in the last couple of years. I've gotten them right every year because I keep taking the over <laughs> and they keep finding ways to get the over. So you look at the roster on paper, it's not very good. Just simply put, yeah. it's fine. You know, nothing special, but they find a way. They got a collection of magic pixie dust and they just find a way to win 90 games every year. I'm going to lean to the over. Uh, Ariel mentioned that the Blue Jays were her dark horse candidate, quote unquote, to win the division. I get mm -hmm. it. My argument would be Tampa at six to one. I, I can't explain how they do it. It's just cash. And I can't even say the front office because they don't spend money on anybody. That's why they got rid of glass now and why he's in uh, L.A. right now. But yeah, they just find ways to win games. They just do. It's going to be a very ugly, low scoring bunch of wins. They're going to win a bunch of one run games and they'll find a way to win like 88 games. They're going to mess around, be a wild card team like they always are. And they'll go from there. I'm going to lean over. I know that you're looking at the lineup. It is not great. Not totally their fault because their best player, of course, had uh, his own run in with the law. And now I think he's still running away from police. But still, point is, you're looking at the, the actual lineup without uh, their former star player they paid a bunch of money to or they were supposed to. You have Rosa Reyna, who we know is solid, but a bit up and down, a bit streaky. You have Brandon Lau, who's got power. Uh, Yandi, who's very solid. And that's kind of it. I mean, yeah. Siri's got some power as well, I guess. But the point is, when you really can't manufacture that many runs, but the pitching staff is always top tier. So it balances out usually. I don't want to compare them to the Guardians, but it's kind of the same idea where they're a team that's going to always find themselves in a bunch of close games because the pitching's great. And Eflin was good last year. Savale's okay. Latell was okay at the end of last year. Taj Bradley was a mess, but we know that he's got some upside, so if he can figure it out, he can be a nice piece. Uh, you're looking at the couple other options here, but the bullpen is usually the bread and butter of this team. Fairbanks I like as a closer, but... I mean, you're looking at this team, and they seem to always find ways to win games. How? I have no idea. But they find ways <laughs> to do it. 84 and a half just feels a bit low. But without Wander Franco, I mean, they had to figure something out. And they're trying their best, but they're a cheaply run organization that seems to try to find gems, a modern-day money ball system that gets their ass kicked in the playoffs every year, but they make the playoffs. So I'll lean to the over. 84 and a half just feels too low. The division, are they going to win it? Probably not. But Tampa always finds ways to excel when every other team in the division stumbles over themselves. I don't mind six to one. I'll put it that way. Yeah, I think, again, um, like you mentioned, with Wander Franco's status uncertain, um, I mean, they still well, have the certain. number four. He's, he's, not, he's not playing again. Like, it, it's, it's yeah. certain, but. And again, they they have the number four overall prospect in their minor league system in Junior Caminero. Uh, so he can easily come up and take over at the shortstop position where Wando Franco was uh, for this race team. Also, Tyler Walls, who had hip surgery, he's going to likely to start the season on the IL for this team as well. So I don't hate their, I mean, their lineup, right? I mean, with Yandy Diaz, Brandon Lau, uh, you mentioned Randy Arozarena. They have guys that can, number one, hit for average, and they have guys that can hit for power as well. And I think they do a fantastic job of how they manage um, their pitching rotation. And I know they've dealt – they've just been decimated by those injuries to – you know, I mean, what could have been when they had Shane McClanahan and if they had a healthy Tyler Glass now, um, eventually those guys were going to – or at least we knew that Tyler Glass now was going to bolt because they were going to pay him the money, and they traded them over to the Dodgers. But, I mean, on paper, this – like you mentioned, this team – has the talent, and they just find a way during the regular season. So I'm not going to make that a mistake again. Uh, I'll take the over here on the uh, Tampa Bay race, at least for the regular season win total of 84 and a half. Now, when it comes to the playoffs, I'll definitely be fading this team because they're, they always cave and they can't find ways to score runs um, because last year they did get swept by the um, Rangers in the wild card series. So um, I think, like you mentioned, right, Kevin Cash is very well, uh, is a great manager. He manages his team very well. He does well with the talent that he does have on this team. Um, so, again, this team could be right there in contention again for this uh, AL East uh, division uh, like they were pretty much all season because of the start they got out to it. I think for this team, 
it's more about how they finish uh, the season rather than how they started last year. So if they're able to stay more consistent than not, um, I think that this team could be right up there in the uh, in the division um, for this AL East division. Anything else for this Tampa Bay Rays team? No. Uh, if it goes bad early, it's going bad late because this team will always sell before it buys. So keep an eye out for that. They would sell at the deadline if things do not go well. I mean, no, it's the same organization every year. The attendance is going to suck, So, but they're good at home. Why? I have no idea. Nobody goes to their games. But they're going to play in that dome. They're going to find ways to be in a bunch of low-scoring games. I'm going to like a lot of unders with their games, yeah. and they're usually going to be ahead 3-2 in the ninth inning. That's usually what happens, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, 100%. So, there we go. Um, I know we didn't get to talk a lot about um, you know awards market or any player prop futures for this division with Ariel, but do, do you have anything that you like for this division? Maybe Cy Young, home run leader, hit leader, anything like that, at least for this division? Well, if you think Tampa can actually break, let's say 90, give or take for wins, do you mm -hmm. want to make a case for cash manager of the year? You lose class now, you have no payroll at all. I'm assuming he has because Tampa's record's been so good. Like I, I got to assume he's won it at least once, but the narrative's there, though, because while well, you pull that up, because a lot of teams like the Rangers, for example, they won the World Series, their payroll's crazy. You always get the co manager of the year award to the Cinderella story team. Playoffs don't matter. So Tampa getting bounced in the first round won't matter. But you lose Glass now. You lose McC McClanahan. You lose Wander for the whole year. And you still find a way to make the playoffs. I think cash is worth consideration for manager of the year. So he won in uh, 2020 and 2021. And what are his, do you know what his odds are by any chance for this year? That's the one market that I cannot find. So maybe I can try, I can try to find it. Uh, can help. Oh, here we go. I found it on DraftKings. Um, American League, he is nine to one. He's the fifth favorite. I think those odds are decent. I mean, we said Tampa to win the divisions at six to one. If they win the division, he's winning manager of the year. I would think so, just because the hype that is with. The Baltimore Orioles, and obviously, I mean, not as much with the Yankees now, but again, with that Yankees tax, that Yankees name, the pinstripes, I think anytime that a team, like you mentioned, right, like th this team that plays in the, the Tropicana, doesn't spend a lot of money on their team. Um, I mean, he could be in that uh, conversation again if he guides them to a what? I mean, they won 99 games last year, and they weren't able to win this division, so... I think if he guides them again to 90 plus wins and they're able to find a way to win the division. I think yeah, Dev, that's definitely intriguing for this uh for, for this um Tampa Bay race team at nine to one. Would you consider Randy or Rosarena for MVP or just you think he's just too inconsistent? I think he strikes out too much. I know strikeouts don't really matter, but I'm saying that for the sake of consistency. A Rosarena just seems to always swing out of his shoes. And mm. I know that's kind of the growing theme now in today's baseball. But his stats are always up and down because he has those yeah. brutal months where he just misses the ball all the time. And I feel like if your strikeout rate is going to be that high and you're going to go through a couple of dry spells, as most players do in general, he's not going to win the award. So, no, I, I don't see that happening. I get the argument you're trying to make because if Tampa is going to be good and a Rosarain is going to lead the way, maybe mm -hmm. I don't think he's good enough to win MVP. Do you? Yeah. I don't think so either. Um, I just think there's more talent in this. I mean, frankly, in the American League than in, the, yeah. in this division as well. Uh, but I think that more exciting conversation would be maybe like a Juan Soto uh, for like home run leader or even MVP uh, for the American League. I think the the when you take a look at the Cy Young Award um, for the American League, you have what three or four different pitchers that are top ten. Um, for the Cy Young Award, right? Kevin Gossman right now, the Blue Jays plus 650. Um, and obviously, Garrett Cole now drops down to 22 to 1, but he was the odds on favorite before the injury news. Um, Corbin Burns, 8 to 1. Uh, Grayson Rodriguez, 20 to 1. So they have three to four guys there. I mean, almost within the same team uh, that are going to be, um, you know, for that American League Cy Young Award. So it's going to be fun to see. Again, I think this division, this and the, I think the NL West are, are the most exciting divisions when you, or at least, at least the AL East, I don't say the NL West because Dodgers always just dominate that division. But I think the AL West, just because the potential and the teams that, again, if we have a race of what happened last year 
where the Orioles won 100 plus games and the Rays won 99 games and the Yankees are always in that conversation and the upside with the Blue Jays I think this is always the most intriguing division uh in baseball um Scott let's wrap it up here with best bets um uh, it could be anything man win total division winner uh anything that you do like as far as a best bet uh for this AL East uh division I'm torn between two. It's usually a matter of the extremes. Do I want the Orioles over? Or do I want the Red Sox under? Because I do like both. The Red Sox won 78 games last year, which props to Cora for winning 78 games with that team. That team was awful. Uh, but still, yeah. Red, the Red Sox on paper are a mess. They're going to be sellers. And I do think reputation is why that win totals at 77 and a half, as opposed to like 72 and a half. Because that team on paper is not very good. Baltimore, though, you can argue with regression. They might be in line to, you know, underachieve slightly. They need to win, what, 11 less games than last year to go under, and they got Corbin Burns? I think Baltimore is just uh, yeah. a really good baseball team. Like, yeah. that, that team on paper is loaded, and the Yankees are now going to be potentially struggling because Cole's going to be out. Toronto were not sold on. Tampa's a cheap team that's also not very talented, and the Red Sox aren't very good. I think I'm going to go with Baltimore over. I just think okay. Baltimore is a team that I see winning 96 games. I, I get the argument from Ariel that you have a lot of young talent, second year. Maybe you'll see some pitching adjustments. They're going to have to adjust their hitting, you know, overall approach, et cetera. I got faith in the team. They they are just solid at basically every position. Yes, they could use a couple of superstars, but a lot of the guys they have that are going to become superstars are homegrown. They're here to stay, and they're really, really good. Gunnar Henderson and Adley Rushman are phenomenal. They are two of the best players in this division. I know Judge is probably the consensus best player in this division. Devers is very good too. Vlad Jr. is up there. I get it. But Rushman and, and uh, yeah, everybody I mentioned Gunner. before with Rushman yeah. and Henderson, even if Jackson mm -hmm. Holiday shows up, they give him a boost. Yeah, That team is loaded. I got to go with Baltimore. I, I just think this team, 90 and a half. That total is way too low for me. This team screams floor of 92, ceiling of 100 plus. I have them winning the division. Give me Baltimore to win 96 and change. Give me Baltimore win total over as my best bet. Yeah, also the fact that we mentioned and Ariel mentioned that ownership, right? That they have a local um, businessman that now owns his team. And he, he brought upon, yeah, and he brought upon uh, Cal Ripken. Uh, to be part of that ownership group as well. So again, if they see a need uh, where they can put this team over the top or at least be in that conversation of winning the World Series title, they're going to go out and make that move. So um, I mean, those were the two that I was going to mention as well. Whichever one you took, I was going to go to the other side. So I'm going to take the Red Sox under, man. Again, I, I've, I've watched the, um, the decline of this team ever since the Mookie Betts trade. Um, don't have the greatest prospects that can come up. I know they have the shortstop uh, that will eventually come up. It's just that I think they're putting too much faith in some of the younger guys that may just not pan out for this team. And at the end of the day, my philosophy always has been, especially when it comes to the playoffs or even the regular season, that you need pitching to still win ball games. And this team just does not have that. I think it was pretty telling that we're relying on Lucas Giolito to be the front line starter for this team. And he ends up with an elbow injury and now relying on Brian Bell, who I do think that he's going to improve this year. And I think that Cutter Crawford is that next step as well. But I just don't think being, especially in this division, like we just mentioned, that we pretty much like at least three of the five teams in this division to take that next step up. Um, that one team is going to be at the bottom of this division. And I think that's going to be the Red Sox. So uh, under 77 and a half for me for this Red Sox team. And again, um, it's just going to be a year where, again, Red Sox fans are just going to be disappointed because they, the talent, at least on the pitching side, is just not there. So, again, best bets recap. Uh, Scott is going with the over on the Baltimore Orioles. That's at 90 and a half. And then uh, I am on the under for the Red Sox for this division for this upcoming season. That's going to wrap it up here for the fifth uh, division of our um, division previews for this upcoming 2024 MLB season. Scott, anything else you want to mention, my man, before we wrap it up here? Uh, yeah, I'm just assuming we agree. Uh, we didn't officially state it, but if we're going with an order of this division, Baltimore won, 
two is interesting because we didn't really talk two about the an interesting order we're going to go in. Yeah. A part of me kind of. So we know to, what I mean, one in five Yankees, is. Yeah, five is the Red Sox. That's a given. Yeah. Two through four is an absolute coin toss. Like you can go whichever way you want here. Yeah. I don't think the Yankees are going to bottom out. So I, don't I think, think so the either. Yankees, I would lean to finish second. I got Tampa third, Toronto fourth, but we can really, we can just hit the randomized button and go from there. Like, I'm, I'm not even sure. You want to give out your five? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the one to five, or sorry, number one and five. Red Sox bottom at the fifth. Um, Orioles to win the division again. I'll go... I'll go Rays two. I'll okay. go Yankees three. And then I'll go Blue Jays Blue four. Jays because four. I know like the Yankees will make that move. Um, once you guys get more news about Garrett Cole of how much more time he's gonna miss, but at least at least for the first 60 days. I mean, I'm assuming that he's probably gonna miss. I think he misses the rest of the season. I think the unfortunately it's two months the minimum. Frame, yeah, he's got a might rehab. Just be they got to put him in the minors, and yeah, it's a mess. Yeah. So, I think they're trading for Cease. Personally, I think that's going to happen yeah. within the next couple of days. I'm not a Cease okay. guy, but I think the Yankees will try to make a panic move to fix something in their own minds. Yeah. We also yeah. didn't even mention Toronto probably has the worst manager in the division. Do we agree Snyder. on that? <laughs> I'm assuming um, we agree on that, right? Kevin Cash, Aaron Boone. It would be Boone. Who did Boone's the, the only other option we can consider. I think, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a Cora guy. I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's John Snyder. Yeah. So you have the worst manager in a team that usually underachieves, and they have a lot of injury-prone players. So I yeah. think you're looking at Toronto underachieving, and I got them at four. They might finish around 500, like I said they would. But, yeah, so we agree on one, four, and five. We just flip the two and the three. Yeah, and again, it could be a toss-up. I mean, last season we saw that. Uh, what the top three teams were separated by what four games, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see if I have this in front of me again here. Um, uh, so the well, you had one and two in a massive gap, but usually it's the top three are pretty close, yeah. So it was uh, Orioles, Rays, Blue Jays, R uh, Yankees, and then the Red Sox. One and two were separated by two games, which is Orioles and Rays, and then it was a 12 game. Uh, six a ten game gap between second and third, and then a seven game gap between the Blue Jays and the Yankees and the Red Sox were closer to the Yankees than the Yankees were to the Blue Jays for that third spot. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, this division it, it's always the most intriguing one because, like you mentioned, we're sitting here trying to figure out the exact exact division forecast. And and again, we know one to five. I think consensus is going to be Baltimore and Red Sox, and then you can shuffle the Rays, Blue Jays, and Yankees in any order. And I don't think anybody would surprise be surprised if either one of those teams finish two or they finish fourth. So uh, this division is going to be fun to talk about. Um, and, and we'll go from there as we approach the season here. So like I mentioned, fifth division preview in the books. We have one division left that will be the NL West um, with, uh, sorry, with uh, Mal and Lante on Thursday. So look out for that. And before we know it, uh, we will be ready for the season. We'll still have a couple more uh, preseason um, shows, whether that's going to be futures uh, that we're going to get to and then our, give out our best bets as well as far as um, awards markets and division by division best bets. So that will be with all the hosts uh, for the MLB Gambling Podcast. So look out for that one as well. Make sure you follow Scott on Twitter. That's at Rice Show Radio. You can follow me there as well at SportsNerd824. Importantly, if you haven't already subscribed to the MLB Gambling Podcast YouTube account, please go ahead and do so. Hit that subscribe button. Share with family and friends. Uh, the MLB season will be here Monday to Friday, as we usually do for the MLB season. So couldn't do it without you guys. Appreciate everybody in the chat. As usual, TVDBJ. Uh, we've got uh, Captain Sano in there. Joe's in there as well. So appreciate you guys tapping in with us. Um, all right. We'll be back on Thursday. Look out for us then. Till then, good luck with your bets. Let's break these books off and let it ride.